We've been seeing more Gyaru representation in anime lately, with the most popular Gyaru anime girl being Marine Kitagawa from My Dress Up Darling. Without a doubt, Marine took the internet by storm being the 10 out of 10 waifu that she is. I mean, just take a look at her. She's got a great design and an infectious, happy personality that we could use a lot more of in life. Let's not forget about a couple of the older Gyaru characters like Gauko from Please Tell Me Gauko chan and the ones from My First Girlfriend is a Gal. This season, however, we have not one, but three new Gyaru girls and this winter season's Hokkaido gals are super adorable. I was ecstatic when I saw that this was getting an anime adaptation. Unfortunately, I don't really have much time to read manga anymore these days, but back when I did, I kept up with this one semi-religiously. I haven't kept up with it in a long while, but it was a pleasant read and it translated into being a pleasant watch as well. Honestly, I just want an excuse to gush about it, so here we are. Anyway, let's get to it. Hokkaido Gals are Super Adorable delivers to us your typical comfy slice of life comedy anime with a romantic subtext. The protagonist Tsubasa Shiki moves from Tokyo to a very snowy Hokkaido in the middle of winter. As he wanders around his new home, taking in the foreign, picturesque sights of wintry Hokkaido, he bumps into the first of the three gals we'll eventually be introduced to, Minami Fuyuki. She's quick to strike up a conversation with and tease Tsubasa, but is happy to have a newcomer in town. Much to their surprise, they both learn that they'll be attending the same school and that Tsubasa sits in the seat next to Minami's. She is elated by this revelation and is quick to become his first friend in his new home. Of course, things don't just end there. Minami invites Tsubasa over to her home to hang out. For the most part, it's just what any normal group of friends would do. You come over, get some snacks, and watch a movie or something on TV. The difference here though, is that Minami is not so subtly showing herself off to Tsubasa, making him both excited and uncomfortable at the same time. She probably could have gotten away with doing more had she not fallen asleep, but what can you do? So that's pretty much this whole anime in a nutshell. There isn't a whole lot going on, but it's a slice of life anime, so there doesn't need to be. Most of the rest of it is Tsubasa going about his day-to-day -day routine with Aminami tagging along and hanging out with him as much as possible. The girls are where the anime shines though, obviously. I mean, this is about gals in Hokkaido being super adorable after all. Honestly, the three of them are all equally amazing for completely different reasons, so it's hard to pick a favorite among them. Not to completely overshadow Tsubasa since I think he's cool, but the waifus are the stars of the show with these kinds of anime, so let's give them a bit of the spotlight here. In order of appearance, we first have Minami. She's your typical kind of anime Gyaru. She's got the trademark blonde hair that most Gyaru have, a bubbly and outgoing personality, and is an overall nice person. Minami seems like she'd be an absolute joy to hang out with. While coming off as a bit empty-headed at times, she's actually pretty perceptive of those around her and tends to value her relationships with other people over her own personal feelings. Also, she gets extra brownie points for having a hot mom that's also Gyaru and seems like a fun person to be around. Mai Fuyuki, much like her daughter, is also just a genuinely nice person. Next up is Sayuri Akino. She's a gamer Gyaru and is almost the polar opposite of Minami. Whereas Minami is extroverted and outgoing and has a number of friends, Sayuri is introverted, reserved, and quite literally didn't have any friends. The main reason being that she has an issue where she tends to sweat too much which led her to avoid exercise and ultimately people in general. That is, until Tsubasa entered the picture where he accidentally walks in on her semi-exposed while wiping off her sweat and a friendship forms between the two and Minami later on. The most unique thing about her though is that she chooses to not speak using the Hokkaido dialect. Last but certainly not least, we have Rena Natsukawa. She's a gentle and studious Garu and a bit of a history buff. She has a huge love for historically accurate Japanese clothing. While seemingly confident about herself, Rena is actually pretty insecure and undervalues herself quite a bit, mostly due to the extremely high expectations her family has of her. Rena is also a kind person and helped Tsubasa study for his important exams. Among the three Gyaru here, Rena was the first to properly fall for Tsubasa, which marks her post-introduction as the true start of the romance aspect of this anime. I absolutely love all the waifus Hokkaido gals have introduced us to. As I mentioned earlier, it's difficult to pick a favorite among them, but if I had to pick one, I think I would have to go with Minami, honestly. I know that it's kind of a basic and in some cases a cop-out answer to pick the first girl an anime introduces you to, but I gotta give it to the OG here. Everything about her demeanor is fun to watch and I like how grounded of a character Minami is. Normally, I would pick a girl like Sayuri as a favorite, since much like myself, she's introverted and I like having a character I relate to, but something about Minami's more positive attitude is doing something different for me that I'm gravitating towards. I'm glad that we've been getting some more anime adaptations of Gyaru focused manga lately. I haven't read too many, but all the Gyaru manga I've read have been really fun, so it'd be cool to see some more anime adaptations. My Dress Up Darling was great, and I'm glad to know that we'll be getting some more of the anime at some point in the future. 
More recently as well, from fall 2022, we had an anime adaptation of More Than a Married Couple But Less Than Lovers, which featured Akari Watanabe. It wasn't a perfect anime adaptation in my opinion, but I think it was good enough to be worth watching, and I do recommend giving that a watch if you're enjoying Hokkaido Gals, but want a much heavier focus on romance from the get-go. However, I highly recommend reading the manga instead. There are some moments from it that just hit harder in the manga than they did in the anime. So, as a source material reader, what are my thoughts on Hokkaido Gals of Super Adorable's anime adaptation? Honestly, it's pretty damn faithful. It doesn't really seem like much, if anything, has been changed at all. Everything's been progressing the way it should, and the pacing from episode to episode has been perfect. Nothing feels as though it's been moving too quickly or too slowly compared to the manga, so I don't really have any complaints. I don't think just 12 episodes would be enough for this anime though, and to be honest, 12 episodes is almost never enough. There's only 10 out of the 12 episodes currently out at the time of writing this video, but depending on where the anime leaves off, we won't be getting to any of the real meat of the story. Initially, this does come off as yet another whatever slice of life harem anime, but there's so much more that the manga has to offer that I don't think the anime is going to get to. I won't spoil anything for those who want to make an effort to read it, but things get pretty juicy. Tsubasa isn't just another plain MC, and the girls have their own drama going on that's rather intriguing. And this is where it begins to share some more similarities to more than a married couple. Like I've mentioned at the start, I haven't been able to keep up with the manga for a good while, so I don't know where it's gone since I last left off, but anything that is going to happen directly after where I predict the anime is going to leave off is worth picking up the source material for. If for whatever reason the anime wasn't really grasping you, I urge you to go read the manga instead. It'll be well worth your valuable time. I guess that about wraps it up for Hokkaido Gals are super adorable. Like I said before, I just wanted an excuse to gush about this anime just because I'm really enjoying it. I'm a huge fan of Slice of Life anime, and this one checks a lot of boxes I look for in these kinds of anime. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Hokkaido Gals though. What did you think about this anime, and if you did watch it, who's your best girl? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.